Good morning, everyone. Well, Happy New Year. I was just thinking, you know, we always think as educators that um, we have a unique opportunity that most other professions don't have, and that is that every year is a new year and that we can look forward and we can look back at things we want to do differently. We can look forward to new plans that we have. And this is a year that really is Happy New Year for us. Um, and most of you here, not all, because there were other retirees in the audience, um, but most of you here know that you'll, you'll have a do-over next year. So it doesn't have to be perfect this year. But for me, there's no do-over. <laughs> so let me tell you that I'm going to make this year the best year, and it won't be perfect. It won't be perfect for any of you. And, and I want it to be just a regular year. Now, of course, we haven't had a regular year for about the last 10 years. But this year is going to be a regular year, and we're going to accomplish a lot, as we always do. But you know something? Over the last many years of my uh, tenure here, particularly since I've been in a position where I had some control, I have no control this morning over <laughs> what's going to happen. But most of the time in, in the years when I've had some control, anything that we have become in those years and any successes that we've had in those years really hasn't ever been about me or me only. Everything of consequence that's happened has happened because of we. And all of us here, some people who are already retired and back and what they contributed and what all of you contribute every day. So, so in order for the year that's coming, my non-do-over year to be a good year, I need all of you. And I think that um, if we all could say we can be a bit better than we thought we were, and I have confidence, I, I think I can do that, and I think you can do that too, but I need you all uh, to think that way for this year. Not for me, but for kids, and for you, because there's not a better feeling in the world than feeling that you will be the best on any given day, you were the best that you could do, under the circumstances. So, so that's my hope for the year and I need everybody to join in and be part of the part of the team. So I don't know a lot about what's gonna happen in the early part of this morning, but I do know I have a few minutes to uh, welcome people and to uh, give some, some thanks. So I welcome you all, whether you were planning to be here today or whether somebody just told you to wear a red shirt and come, I'm not so sure, but in any event, um, I appreciate all who are here. Um, certainly our returning uh, teachers, welcome back. We've had two days of orientation with our new staff and they've gone well despite the weather and a lot of compliments, a lot of good feelings and certainly lots and lots of excitement for the new teachers. We have um, 27 um, new teachers, 24 of them brand new contracts three people that joined us because they came late in the year last year and didn't have an opportunity to go through this process. So um, 27 people, 14 of them are folks that have master's degree, it's 52%, about what we normally have, two people with doctorates and one person with a legal d degree. So I would ask at this point all of the new staff to hand, stand up so that you can give them all the wonderful welcome that you always do. So all of you Welcome to our, to our guests this morning, and uh, many of them are uh, spattered, uh, spattered, spattered about the uh, auditorium here. Uh, we also have uh, members of the school committee here. You're going to hear from Michelle, the chair, uh, in a bit. Um, I, we mentioned the new teachers. I want to especially thank our mentoring committee and our, uh, the whole team. And so, where's Courtney Stevenson? 
and Rich Florence, and coordinator. Thank you. They've done an enormous amount of work, and they were all here bright and early on um, Monday morning at 7 a.m. to make all the final plans for the for the day. So we also have building leaders. I won't read off all our names, and we have so many of you that have volunteered yet again to be mentors to the new teachers. So if the building reps and all of the mentors would stand up, please. And be recognized by your peers and thanked by us. And of course, uh, my central office buddies are here. Um, Jamie, love you a lot. Assistant Superintendent, stand up. Jamie, stay standing up. And And John Ferris, that you won't recognize with a white hat over there, Director of Business and Support Services. And our newest central office team member, Dr. Suzanne Minnis, and Suzanne is our new special education director. Welcome to Suzanne. All right in the, uh, in the spirit of, of whatever today is going to bring. <laughs> I want to give special thanks to uh, some of the people you, you can sit. Uh, special thanks to some of the people that have worked all summer in, in all of our rehabs, and uh, most especially our uh, maintenance and custodial crew, uh, and Doug Foley and Katie Hartman, who lead them, and this auditorium and how comfortable it feels and how quiet it sounds as compared to what we've had here for a long, long time. So special thanks to all of them for all of that. I don't know. If Katie or Doug is here? No? They're all dealing with the mold, I think. And all of our, uh, our, our clerical and secretarial staff, and especially the people at the central office that are here in red, so if you guys would all stand up, with the folks in each of the buildings and all also here at work all summer. Transportation workers, uh, I was at a Selectman's meeting last night where they approved our brand new bus. We have a, another bus, it's going to be a Manco bus, but it will be under school department control, which means it will save us money and save Manco money for doing more things with kids, and we're really happy about that. And I always recognize at this time of year the many of you who have been in your classrooms despite the heat, you know, particularly the last three days, but also throughout the the summer. We do notice that and we do appreciate it and congratulations. Give yourself a hand for, for that. So uh, we um, will be back uh, in a bit to hear words of welcome from the school committee and also from the uh, HEA. But at the moment, my job is to turn things over to Jamie with a bit of trepidation, but confidence that it's all in good fun. Thank you. Good morning and welcome back. Uh, it's truly great, uh, I'm just gonna, this is really warm, so I'm just gonna take that off for a second. Um, welcome back. Uh, it's truly great to see you all, and I hope you all found some time, uh, although there's really never enough time, uh, to uh, relax, rejuvenate, and refresh for what promises to be an excellent year. 55 years ago, our superintendent of schools, Dr. Dorothy Gallo, sat where you are all sitting now as she began her first year as a high school math teacher here at Hingham High School. The year was 1963. The average income per year was $5,807. The average cost of a new home uh, was $12,650. And gas uh, was a staggering 29 cents per gallon. <laughs> if today was 1963, just yesterday, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would have delivered his I Have a Dream speech into our collective memory. Next month in October, uh, j uh, just a few weeks away, Hurricane Flora will, uh, will ravage the Caribbean with the deadliest hurricane that we have seen in the Atlantic in the 20th century. And in November, just 85 days away, President Kennedy would be assassinated in Dallas, Texas. To put that in perspective, 
55 years from now will be the year 2073. For 55 years, Dr. Dorothy Gallo has served the Hingham community. And in just a few minutes, uh, we will have a very special presentation designed to celebrate Dr. Gallo's service to our community and give you all a sense of the path that she took uh, that, one, that would one day lead her to be our superintendent of schools. The presentation will be narrated by a group of very special people, Dodd's one-time students, uh, past colleagues, mentees, and family. Before that begins, however, I want to take a minute to personally thank Dot for her support, mentorship, and patience with me. A new assistant superintendent to her, who showed up for work just over two years ago, uh, suited, smiling, and ready to change the world. <laughs> Seriously, she has the patience of a saint. <laughs> um, and for that, I'm forever grateful. But let's pause for a minute, and Dot, as you scan the room, uh, you, uh, you'll see the room is full of people who are equally as grateful for the role that you have played in their lives. Whether it was as a final interview before signing your contract for your dream teaching job, or an administrator who needed your support or thoughts on, or feedback on a challenging situation. Um, this room is thankful for you, you having been in this community. I had the opportunity early this summer to travel to New York City, and after a significant wait, uh, got to see Hamilton on Broadway. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, it's just as good as everybody says it is. Uh, but I digress. There was one uh, particular lyric uh, that, stuck, that, struck, that struck me. Hamilton, upon contemplating his impending death at the hand of Aaron Burr, experiences sort of a stream of consciousness. And um, one of the things he says is, legacy. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. Um, but looking around this room, Dot, I, the people assembled here for convocation, and those who have come specifically to be part of this special day for you, I can say with confidence that the seeds you have planted run deep, and the children of this community will continue to reap the rewards of a career well spent in the service of others. Today is Dot's last convocation as our superintendent of schools. It marks the beginning of a year-long celebration of Dr. Gallo's service to our community. Beginning in January, each school will have the opportunity to celebrate Dr. Gallo in their own special way. Hingham High School will lead off our efforts in January, followed by Hingham Middle School in February, PRS in March, uh, Foster in April, East in May, and South School in June. On the afternoon of June 5th, this is a save the date, on the afternoon of June 5th, uh, 2019, we will be hosting a community-wide uh, reception at the Hingham Middle School cafeteria uh, to thank Dr. Gallo for her service, and we have scheduled the Gallo uh, Retirement Gala uh, for Thursday, July 18th, 2019, uh, at, Black Rock, uh, uh, at um, uh, Granite Links Golf Club in Quincy. Um, more information on both of those events we go, will be forthcoming to you as the year progresses and the year gets underway. So Dot, at this stage, we'd like to ask you to sit back, relax, and let us play a quick game of This Is Your Life. Uh, Gretchen, let's start the time machine. Good morning. Our story of Dr. Gallo's relationship with the Hingham Public Schools began 72 years ago. And that's the number of years that you were in school as a student plus your 55 in this, as a teacher and administrator. So it began 72 years ago in the year 1946. Dr. Gallo, then known as Dorothy German, grew up on Crows Lane, tucked off of Hersey Street in Hingham, within walking distance to Hingham Square. She was the oldest of eight children with four younger sisters and three younger brothers. Dorothy's very first day of school in the Hingham Public Schools began when she entered the doors of the new West School located on Thaxter Street, which is now the site of the Hingham Housing Authority. The old West School, which is in the corner, was located next door and had become a private home. Contrary to popular legend, Dr. Gallo was not present for the West School ribbon cutting in 1894. <laughs> I just read the material. 
After completing grades one through three at West School, Dorothy and her siblings moved into the upper elementary grades, attending school in a rather industrial looking building known as North School. Due to the post-war population surge, the Hingham Public Schools were faced with challenges in housing the growing student population. The North School was originally the personnel training building for the Bethlehem Hingham Shipyard and was retrofitted for classroom use to house upper elementary students. The town paid $2,401 to the federal government to rent the school for the first year. And because there's always a circle of life, the Follett Corporation offices, we all know Aspen Software, they're located next door to where the North School stood. Dr. Gallo's interest in school facilities no doubt started here at North School. Needless to say, were the structure in use today, we would most certainly be applying for MSBA funding to build a new school. <laughs> at the very least, our PTO would fund a lovely natural playground to soften the industrial feel. <laughs> Dr. Gallo attended grades seven and eight at Lincoln School, which was later converted into senior housing. She attended grade nine at the old Hingham High School building, which then became Central Junior High. Coming full circle, Dr. Gallo's office now resides in the very building, central office, where she once aced high school algebra and took on a variety of student leadership roles. Again, due to the population explosion post-war, the Hingham Public Schools needed to address the growing student population, particularly at the secondary level. To accommodate the ever-growing student body, the new Hingham High was built in the 1950s, and we suspect this may have been Dr. Gallo's first ribbon-cutting ceremony. Dr. Gallo attended high school in this new building for sophomore through senior years, graduating in 1957. To the surprise of no one, Dorothy German was a stellar student who served as president of the National Honor Society. She especially excelled in math and credits one particular mentor, her math teacher Elwood, Elwood Stoddard, for inspiring her to pursue her talents as a mathematician. Beyond her academic achievements, Dorothy German also pursued many hobbies, interests, and extracurricular activities. She enjoyed dance and gymnastics, which she'll show us later. Um, <laughs> and took part in a number of student committees. In fact, Dorothy was co-editor of her 1957 yearbook, The Highway. Given her academic prowess, work ethic, demonstrated leadership, and involvement in school activities, Dorothy was accepted to Harvard Radcliffe and, to no one's surprise, was voted by her peers at Hingham High School as the student most likely to succeed. Little did her peers know that her leadership skills would one day be further honed in the very school system that they themselves had attended. In Dr. Gallo's Harvard Radcliffe class era, there were future U.S. representatives, a couple of ambassadors, a national security advisor, a prominent economist, the actors and actresses Stockard Channing and James MacArthur, who played Dano in the original Hawaii Five-0, although he dropped out early on, <laughs> race car driver Peter Gregg, and the author of Jaws, Peter Benchley. Dot shares the qualities and traits that many of her fellow students had to make them successful, but it is Elizabeth Holloway Marston who preceded doc, Dr. Gallo's time at Harvard by 40 years that created the character we think represents her best, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Dr. Gallo graduated from Harvard Radcliffe in 1961 and had lined up a position as an actuary at a large Boston insurance company. Meantime, she was asked to fill in as an interim high school math substitute in situate. This, quote, temporary math training teaching position in Situate lasted for two years, and Dr. Gallo's actuary career remained a road not taken, thank God. In a faded plot twist, during the summer of 1963, Dr. Gallo received a call from her former math teacher and mentor, Mr. Elwood Stoddard, who was now math department head in Hingham. 
Mr. Stoddard had an immediate need <clears throat> for a math teacher at Central Junior High, immediately thought of his all-star teacher and mentee, Dorothy. Dr. Gallo interviewed for the teaching position in Hingham with her son, weeks old baby Teddy, in the now in tow, napping in the back of a Volkswagen bug. I can't picture Dot with a Volkswagen bug this morning. <laughs> and as they say, the rest is history. Dr. Gallo's first assignment was teaching math for grades seven through nine at Central Junior High School which is now central office, on the third floor of the original building, which is now the town accountant space. Over the years, Dr. Gallo's teaching roles morphed and changed, and during her years in the classroom, she taught nearly every course offered in grades seven through 12 math sequence, from pre-algebra and algebra through BC level AP calculus. She taught hundreds of students in the course of her career, including myself. In addition to her skill for teaching secondary math, Dr. Gallo also pursued a passion project, working as an elementary math specialist to foster higher level mathematical thinking. She modeled a math lab approach using math manipulatives to allow students to verbalize and express their mathematical thinking. She also created and taught Math Plus at grades four through six in each of the elementary schools from the late 70s through the early 1990s. It is in 1985 when I was a student in her grade six math plus group at Plymouth River School that I first met Dr. Gallo. During these years in the classroom, Dr. Gallo worked alongside many talented colleagues, forming close collaborative relationships and lifelong friendships with peers such as Joyce McHugh, Doug Hawley, George Edmonds, Jim Kirkaldi, Lainey Silva, Barbara Finnegan, and Scott Burke. Dr. Gallo taught in every building in town, including Hingham High School, Central Junior High School, Lincoln School, North School, Plymouth River School, Foster School, South School, and the original East School. Truly, no one has a greater institutional knowledge or grasp of the Hingham Public Schools history greater than Dr. Gallo. I'm that baby in the back of the VW bug. <laughs> um, we had a lot of VW bugs, and I remember having to wait or sleep or read in the back of those VW bugs while my mother had to go to many, many, many school events and meetings. Um, gonna go off script just a little bit here. Uh, last time I was up in front of many of you was at the dedication of the library at East School, and I was privileged to do the dedication speech at the library, but moments before I stepped up to give that speech, my mother gave me the look and pulled me aside and said, you know, you're the only son, the only child, and the only heir. <laughs> What you say in the next few minutes could change all that. <laughs> well, I didn't write this one, Mom. So this is straight off the board here. So blame <coughs> that one. Um, during these years of teaching, my mother also came full circle in her roles uh, in the Hingham Public Schools as a parent of a Hingham Public Schools student, me. I attended the original East School for grades K through five, South School for grade six, South Junior for seven and nine, and Hingham High School here for 10 through 12. I graduated high school in 1981 and went to continue, and a lot of my teachers are here, which is awesome. Uh, and went to continue my studies at Wesleyan. In addition to being a high, uh, Hingham Public School parent, I just learned what HPS meant earlier today. Um, <laughs> Mom was also a special subspecies of the Hingham Youth Hockey uh, for, oh, a Hingham parent known as a hockey mom, donating her time also as a member of the Hingham Youth Hockey Board. This mostly involved getting up early, driving long distances, sitting in cold rinks, drinking truly terrible coffee, and making the occasional trip to the emergency room at South Shore Hospital for me. Um, and I just have to say, a lot of you are parents with kids. You know, my mother is a teacher administrator. You guys all treasure your summers. My mother really never had a summer. 
I played every sport known to man. So her summers consisted of waking up early to a hockey game, then to the golf course, then to a soccer game, then to a baseball game, then to another hockey game, all in one day. And that was pretty much her entire summer. So thanks for that one. Appreciate it. Um, I'd like to also share a few video clips, holy cow, of my fondest memories, uh, most especially uh, memories of having my mom as a math teacher <laughs> in high school. How did you let this happen? Hey mom, here we are at East School. No, make that New East School. This is where I went to elementary school from fifth, first to fifth grade. It's ironic now that the library is the Dorothy Gallo Library. Wait a minute, no, it's the Gallo Library, so I can take full credit for the library whenever I visit this library. But the real reason we are here is this spot right down below. This is where you picked me up that one day in fifth grade and forgot to tell my grandfather. And he sent every cop in the state of Massachusetts out looking for me while we were just driving around the neighborhood. So thanks for that, Mom. Hey, Mom, this is where you had to spend way too many times in my account through tryouts, through practices, through games. I'm guessing conservatively you had to spend two days a week, every week for 10 years. That's 1,040 times you had to be in this rank. And also, thanks for those math genes. Hey mom, and here's where we went too many times after the hockey rink. Thank you for being not squirmish about blood on all the times I had to get the cuts around my eye. Thanks a lot, mom. Hey mom, so as you can see, we're outside of Hingham High School here. I tried to go inside towards our old math class, but apparently since I graduated, this place has become Fort Knox. A um, little bit of trivia for anyone who didn't know, my mother was the first graduating class of Hingham High School in this building, but what I really came for was to go down to the calculus room because for some reason they allowed you to teach me pre-calculus and trigonometry which I thought was very odd that someone would let a mother teach their son which was very awkward for me for a whole year because I couldn't you know ask a question because I didn't know whether to say mom or Mrs. Gallo or hey you or whatever but you gave me an A and I always had homework. <laughs> Back to the fall. Um, in 1975, the powers that be in Hingham recognized the leadership potential of their all star math teacher and tapped Dr. Gallo to fill the role of grade administrator at HHS, which is now called the assistant principal role. Hingham High was at that time a three year school with more than 1,200 students in grades 10 through 12. And though its enrollment was comparable to what we have here today, the building was actually much smaller as the addition of new space such as the science wing was still in the future. After a few years in this role, Dr. Gallo proceeded through a number of other leadership roles, including coordinator of the district's gifted and talented program, math department director, and science director. During this time, Dr. Gallo kept her hand in a classroom, teaching one or more classes while assuming the leadership roles. She also managed during these years to pursue a PhD focusing her thesis on the development of mathematical thinking in young children. In tight budget times, Dr. Gallo wore multiple hats at once. For example, serving simultaneously as math and science director, known as the SMART department, science, math, and related technologies. In 1991, after serving in these various roles of curriculum leadership, Dr. Gallo was named assistant superintendent, working with then superintendent, Dr. Gary Baker. During a portion of her tenure as assistant superintendent, Dr. Gallo continued to wear two other hats, serving as math director, science director, and assistant superintendent simultaneously. Superwoman has nothing on Dr. Gallo. In 2001, after 10 years as assistant superintendent, Dr. Gallo was appointed by the Hingham School Committee as the Superintendent of Schools, succeeding Dr. Gary Baker. It is worth noting that Dr. Gallo is the 18th Superintendent of the Hingham Public Schools and the first female to hold that role. There is a plaque at Central Office listing all 18 superintendents, beginning with John Snyder, who first assumed the role in 1871. 
We all know Dr. Gallus fondness for numbers, and it is fitting that the 18th superintendent is now completing her 18th year on the job. During her 18 years as superintendent, Dr. Gallo has led the Hingham ship with courage and skill, setting a clear vision and pursuing excellence with the support of her leadership team. During her tenure, she has worked closely with two assistant superintendents, first Ellen Keene and now Jamie LaBilwa, to ensure the smooth functioning of our schools while maintaining a focus on what is best for the children. She has mentioned aspiring, I'm sorry, she has mentored aspiring leaders and works closely with principals and directors to ensure that Hingham children may thrive and achieve their potential. Dr. Gallo welcomes each and every single new hire in Hingham with a one-on-one -on -one meeting, getting to know each new hire and giving each new staff person a sense of our district culture and community, and they often come back and comment on how fabulous that was. It is impossible in a few short minutes to capture all of the facets and accomplishments of Dr. Gallo's 72 year relationship with the Hingham Public Schools and all of her various roles as student, teacher, school administrator, director, parent, assistant superintendent, and superintendent. We could list the citations garnered across our district during her tenure, red ribbon, green ribbon, blue ribbon, display the trophies of our music, art, drama, sports teams, and other extracurricular activities as evidence of excellence. We could cite test scores, showcase buildings improved and constructed, or list the number of new initiatives, such as full day kindergarten, champion during her tenure. We might list all of the state mandates and acronyms that have come and go over the past 18 years, prepare spreadsheets of the grant funding pursued and dollars saved and spent, mostly saved, um, or play back real tapes from school committee meetings. Instead, we've decided to put together a short video, including staff and students, to give you a snapshot of the day-to-day -day life of our district that has grown and evolved over the past 18 years. Given that the video clips were sent in over the summer by staff and students, the video is more in the spirit of heartfelt home movie than Hollywood production. <laughs> Some of the footage was shot by six-year-olds. Um, however, it does give some sense of the breadth and depth of Dr. Gallo's impact, the enormity of the job as superintendent, and in the spirit of welcome for our new staff, will give you a sense of the community that you are joining on this, your first convocation. How do you measure the reach of a career that has spanned more than 50 years. How do you begin to count the number of Hingham lives impacted by an educator who has dedicated her entire life to the students of our district? How do you quantify the value of an individual who has dedicated herself 24 seven, 365 days a year for all of her career. How many lasting friendships have taken root and flourished during our shared decades in the Hingham Public Schools? How do you measure the impact of so many budgets carefully planned and so many dollars annually spent to ensure the success of the Hingham Public Schools? How do you memorialize the countless accomplishments and achievements garnered with Dr. Gallo at the helm. A superintendent needs to be an expert in content standards, best practices, pedagogy, policy, human resources, law, budgeting and finance, technology, social media, health and wellness, social emotional learning, 
facilities, politics, and public relations, and that's all before 10 a.m. <laughs> uh, in New England, in particular, uh, a superintendent also needs to have a degree in meteorology to track all this winter storm movements. Dr. Gallo has worn all of these various hats and juggles the varied roles with, uh, and responsibilities with the utmost skill and professionalism. School business is never done and Dot's living proof. The devil's in the details and Dot is masterful at the attention to detail. She has an extraordinary record of having a balanced budget while ensuring Hingham students get a top-notch education. Here's a behind-the-scenes glimpse of the operations side of the business and all the working parts that make this district tick. The total budget for 2017 to 2018 was $49,762,697. 2,868 purchase orders were signed this past year by Dr. Gallo, although she will swear it is twice as many. More than 16,000 pencils would. There are 16,800 reams of paper or last year. There were 80,409 paychecks cut this year and 1,026,778.35 hours worked by all the employees this year. The technology department is responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of over 3,800 computing devices. The Hingham Public Schools three-year mentoring and induction program serves 20 to 30 new educators each year. We provide collegial support in furthering the development of beginning teachers and educators. Last year, Dr. Gallo hired 115 new staff members. Thanks, Dr. Gallo, for bringing us on board. Yes, there were 15 of us that retired last year, and I was one of them. And we've been fortunate. Under Dr. Gallo's watch, our elementary curriculum has continued to you know, evolve to meet the needs of all kids um, as we deal with the change in MCAS testing and the change in curriculum frameworks. So kudos to Dr. Gallo for her leadership. We just want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Gallo for um, being a driving force behind the implementation of Full Day Kindergarten. It's made a huge impact on their ability to work socially with one another. When we were half day, we did a lot of getting through the curriculum, but we weren't able to focus on the individual child. And the full day K has really allowed us to get to all of the children's needs and also know them as, as people as well. Having that time to spend one-on-one -on -one in small groups has been just wonderful. Seeing them develop and revisit the same topic a couple times has been so helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Last year, more than 300 kindergarten students learned to count to 100. Last year, more than 280 kindergartners participated in the wedding of Q and U, the alphabet's greatest love story. Thank you, Dr. Gallo, for supporting our elementary science curriculum. Our first graders love engaging in hands-on activities. For example, in our sound unit, the children identified sounds as well as had the opportunity to make some musical instruments with the help of our music teacher. So it was very cross-curricular and everybody enjoyed it and have fun. Thank you again. Thank you. Each year, hundreds of elementary students participate in the HEF Spelling Bee. Each year, Pam third graders study colonial life at Miles Plantation. In fourth grade, we are developing lifelong readers with engaging programs such as the Battle of the Books. Last year, more than 300 fifth grade students explored the forest on our school's nature trails. Last year, more than 1,500 students discovered favorite books at our elementary school libraries. Over 2,000 elementary school students in Hingham planted crops through a partnership with Holly Hill Farm. Hundreds of students demonstrated positive behaviors in our hallways and on our playgrounds. Last year, more than 1,800 elementary students learned how to be a good sport in gym class.
Last year, hundreds of students explored the world of computer science through programming in Scratch and Blackly. Every year, over 350 fifth graders learn how to play an instrument or sing through our elementary music ensembles. Yes. This year, 45 students will be in our MECO program. Dr. Gallo, you are such an incredible example of kindness to all. Here at South School, our motto is to be kinder than necessary. Last year, we made over 600 kindness rocks and gave out, out thousands of buzz awards to our students for various acts of kindness. So we are really lucky that Dr. Gallo um, and working with others had the foresight to see our elementary population was growing. So more than about 15 years ago, we started the process to build the East School. Ten years ago, the school came online, came in on time and under budget, and we are lucky that we have a wonderful state-of-the-art school for elementary kids. Each year, over 1,000 middle school students are issued a Chromebook by the Hingham Public School Systems that help them to access the World Wide Web and enhance their learning on a daily basis. In addition to our K-12 Spanish program, at the secondary level, students can choose from Chinese, Latin, French, or Spanish. For three years, HMS has participated in the All School Read. Thank you, Dr. Gallo, for supporting this initiative that has broadened the horizons of our students and has united us in a common goal. Over the past two years, the entire eighth grade has taken part in Civics Week, a very important week where they learn about our country's rich history and the rights and responsibilities they have as a United States citizen. Over 700 students have traveled to Washington, D.C., and the entire grade has experienced Civics Week activities either in the Boston area or D.C., our nation's capital. Over the past five years, almost 1,500 students have explored the engineering design process in sixth grade STEM. Every winter, approximately 130 HMS students and several chaperones spend a Saturday with the HMS Ski Club at Pat's Peak. Not only do we have a great day skiing and boarding, but each of these kids becomes closer and more connected to their school and to each other. I joined the HMS English Department in 1996, and since then, Dr. Gallo has supported us in so many ways. Um, as far as hosting authors, we have hosted poets Janet Wong, Liz Rosenberg, uh, other authors such as Casey Sherman and Dave Wedge. Um, we also participated in the All School Read, and a couple years ago our school read A Long Walk to Water, and our school raised $10,000 to build a well in South Sudan. Over the last few years, the middle school green team has promoted sustainable initiatives including installing garden beds, composting the cafeteria, school-wide recycling, and has piloted a hydroponic system in a life science classroom. Along with the environmental benefits of these programs, teachers are given the opportunity to provide students with hands-on learning. All of this was done through a teacher-student-parent collaboration, and with continued support from the Hingham Public School community, we hope to further promote sustainable practices. Hi, Dr. Gallo. It's Rhea Cassidy standing at the doorway to Big Bend National Park. I want to stop and say thank you so much from the poets, artists, and writers at Hingham Middle School for all your support. Hundreds of kids have found their voices, found a home in the Poets, Artists, and Writers magazine for their art, their poetry, and their short stories. Every year, hundreds of pounds of recyclables are removed from the trash stream. Even better than that, since 2011, when Hingham started composting, more than 70,000 pounds of compost have been removed from our trash, one of many reasons why Hingham is a green ribbon school. Under Dr. Gallo's leadership, Hingham High students have traveled to over 24 different foreign countries on school-sponsored trips. Thank you, Dr. Gallo, for recognizing that international education can play a vital role in students' education. Since 2014, over 180 HHS students have graduated with global certificates and hundreds more have benefited from the increased global awareness that the Global Citizenship Program and Club have brought to our school. Thanks for your support. Last year, 284 Hingham High School students participated in National History Day. 
Dr. Gallo is the architect of Hingham's Comprehensive Math Program. It is a program that is tightly connected from kindergarten all the way through high school. Because of Dr. Gallo, every day, thousands of Hingham math students are asked to think creatively, challenge themselves, and to persevere in the face of difficulty. Thanks to Dr. Gallo's unwavering support of the English department's writing program, over the course of a single year, Hingham Public School students write a combined total of 31,200 essays to fill their folders. At Hingham High School, in addition to core content science courses in biology, chemistry, and physics, students can also explore science further through a number of upper-level science electives, including AP Chemistry, Biology, and Physics, Oceanography, Electronics, and Anatomy and Physiology. Under Dr. Gallo's watch, three new electives have been added, including Environmental Science, Biotechnology, and Greenhouse Botany. Hingham Robotics, we started in 2013. Uh, that first year, we were able to win the Rookie All-Star Award and made it to the finals in Champion. And our team has developed and grown over the past five years, and it culminated this year in us going to the New England Championships. Club would like to congratulate you, Dr. Gallo, on your retirement. We hope it is long, healthy, and full of excitement. Every year, some 400 students participate in Drama Club between high school and middle school. That means in your 18-year tenure that over 7,000 students have benefited in drama. That's 7,000 students that have entertained, enriched, and informed. 7,000 students that have created, built, and researched. And 7,000 students that have learned about the world around them and walked in the shoes of others, learning about empathy and the human condition. Congratulations! Congratulations. Under Dr. Gallo's tenure, Hingham High School students have submitted 28,987 college applications. Coincidentally, the Counseling Office has also gone through 28,987 boxes of tissues. Student Council has worked to encourage student leadership, foster school spirit, and fundraise for various charities. For our efforts, we've been recognized by the Massachusetts Association of Student Councils as a Gold Council of Excellence. This is the uh, 27th year that DARE has been offered in the English school system. And at the high school, we've offered a variety of programs such as uh, Students Against Drunk Driving, uh, the RAD program, the criminal justice courses, and uh, a variety of ways that the police integrate into the uh, school community. Okay. The relationship between the Hingham Police Department and the Hingham School Department is the envy of Plymouth County. Hi, Dot. I want to wish you a great year and especially to thank you for everything you have done for Hingham High School Athletics. And through all of it, the replacement of the athletic facilities was a job of epic proportions and it never would have happened without your support. When you think about getting a new track, getting a new baseball field, a new softball field, new tennis courts, Synthetic field, stands, lights, concession stand, and of course, the press box. Everything was an unbelievable undertaking, and it, if you hadn't been there in support, it never would have happened. So every time when you drive by this facility, make sure you know our appreciation, because you were a number one going for that. Thank you. Dr. Gallo, under your leadership, the Hingham High School Athletic Department has grown to 36 varsity teams with 972 student-athletes participating for a rate of 78%, among the highest in the state of Massachusetts. Additionally, we are a collection of some of the most respected programs in the state. Thank you for your leadership and enjoy your retirement. On behalf of the Hingham Education Association, I want to express our gratitude for Dr. Gallo for giving us the freedom to teach. By being a hands-off superintendent, she allows us and our students to be very hands-on. In her role as captain of the Hingham Public Schools ship, Dr. Gallo has covered much ground, braved stormy seas, and celebrated our ship's progress. Over the course of the coming year, students, family, staff, and community members will all have a chance to say thank you to Dr. Gallo for her many years of dedicated service. She has poured her heart and her soul into this community and has dedicated her life's work to the children of Hingham. 
Here are just a few of the many thank yous that will be forthcoming as we celebrate Dr. Gallo's many accomplishments. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Best wishes, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Best wishes, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Best wishes, Dr. Gallo. Best wishes, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Hey, Mom. Uh, this is uh, 23 Foley Beach Road. This is where I grew up from the ages of uh, pretty much zero to five. And this is the home where you instilled the values in me that I think are your greatest values. Uh, you are the most honest uh, person I know. Um, you have a sense of fair play and you see the best in people or what should be the best in people. And those are characteristics you gave to me. So as everybody's been thanking you in this video, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for those characteristics that you gave to me. Thank you, Mom, for all you did for the town and thank you all for all you did for me. Thank you, Dr. Thank you all. Um, I'm not often at a loss for words, and I had some sense of what was going to happen today, but you know, seeing it and hearing about it and living it are very different things. Those of you who know me well know that I, you know, I'm kind of stoic about most things. Um, I don't deal well with emotion. But you need to know that while I can say thank you once or twice or hundreds of times, and you may not see the smile on my face that you might like to see, but know the smile in my heart is there. And um, I will remember this many, many times, and that smile is going to be there forever. Thank you. here always on this day to look forward and uh, so I would like to introduce uh, the chairman of our school committee Michelle Ayer who will bring greetings from the school committee. Can't believe I have to follow up. That one. Okay. <laughs> Good morning everyone. On behalf of the Hingham School Committee past and present, some of whom are here this morning, Liza O'Reilly, I think I see Carol Falvey, Christine Smith, Ray Estes back there. Um, welcome to the 2018-2019 school year. Choosing to become an educator requires a level of patience, enthusiasm, and expertise that the average person just simply doesn't possess. And simply put, educators are a rare breed. And Dr. Gallo, you are truly one of the rarest breeds of all. An HBS student, yourself, a Harvard Radcliffe graduate, a working mother, a distinguished teacher, administrator, and superintendent, for 72 years, you have been an integral part of the Hingham Public School community and the town of Hingham. That is an amazing accomplishment and one that I don't think can ever be replicated by anyone. 
thank you for your dedication to this district and to this town. You have given so much to the Ham Public Schools, but the greatest gift that you have left is absolutely the best gift imaginable. You have filled this school district with incredibly talented, qualified, caring, generous, and supportive faculty. You teach our children to read, to write, to do arithmetic, and science, and technology, and art, and music, and drama, and foreign language, and health, and sportsmanship. The list is endless. You care for these students, you guide them, you protect them. And I know there are some days when people may be louder about the other things, but throughout this school year and every school year, our hope is that there are many, many more days that you all feel the respect, the gratitude, and appreciation that you so richly deserve. Have a wonderful school year, and thank you very much for all you do for our students. Michelle just made me think of a thought I want to share that um, the new teachers heard the other day, and that's that um, people often ask me in uh, the last few years, actually, um, what is it that's different about Hingham Public Schools? What makes Hingham Hingham? And I always give the same answer, and I will always continue to do that. The first thing is staff. Michelle mentioned that. Um, hiring qualified, enthusiastic, and capable staff is something we put a lot of time and effort into. So staff is number one. But having people is only part of the, of the secret, I think. Having a structure that looks at curriculum and puts first things first is a huge asset and a big part of what makes Ingham, Ingham. Thirdly, I always mention support support of community members, whether they be individuals or groups like PTOs and booster clubs, or the town in terms of uh, giving us our, what I've always said is our fair share of the available funding, because we can argue about that a bit. Uh, but anyway, the S's, the staff, the structure, the support, that's what makes Ping Ping. And those are things that I hope will go on forever and ever and ever. So next to bring greetings uh, from the HEA is your president, Jim Gustafson. Dr. Gallo, Dr. Libby Lois, Dr. Vinus, Ms. Ayer, Ms. O'Reilly, and school committee members past and present, and honored guests, building and department administrators, and most of all, a warmest welcome to all returning educators and our newest cohort of teachers. Welcome to Convocation 2018. Um, I want to take a minute to point out the association officers that are here, so please stand and remain standing. Uh, our Vice President, Carrie Beth Sorokoff, <laughs> Treasurer and Membership Chair, Meg Melanson, <laughs> Secretary, Caitlin McGinnis, <laughs> Professional Rights and Responsibilities, Pat Tomasek, <laughs> Negotiations Chair, Tom Melanson, <laughs> Scholarship Lottery and Social Chair, Chelsea Holloway, <laughs> Webmasters, Communications and Political Education, Jacqueline Boupre. Our Plymouth County Education Association liaison, Paula Flanagan. Retirement Chair, Barbara Kahane. High School Reps, Gary Forrester, Wes Hutchinson, and Maria Zaid. Betsy Orkut from HMS. From East School, Beverly Vernon. From Foster, Heather Anderson, Liz Curran, and Sarah Bogle. And from South, Patty Van Merlo and Katie Campbell. And Stacey, if we 
us um, for all of you who participated in the work of the HEA last year, whether it was signing a petition, a nomination paper, phone banking, supporting us, and who all wore the colors of Hingham this morning. Will all of you active members of the HEA please stand up? To me, the summers are always great, although this past summer, I was quickly reminded how life can change in an instant. A childhood friend of one of my older sons died quite unexpectedly in a motorcycle accident. Sorry. Wait a second. Um, this young man was in several of my classes when I worked at Furnace Brook Middle School. He did scouts with my son. He was so lively and full of joy. So full of joy that when he and my son were placed together in kindergarten class, it was decided at the end of that school year that Matt and Harry could not be assigned to the same classroom for the rest of the time in elementary school. Many of us have experienced this type of joy in our classrooms and in our families. Away from home, in an unfamiliar city and state, I did not take the news well. Crying in Cleveland was not something I expected. And in the midst of all this desperate sadness, I was thrown a lifeline. A much needed boost from a very unexpected source, Deidre, one of our most um, energetic and effusive Hingham parents, Deidre Anderson, who is director of the Hingham's Historical Society. After a flurry of text messages, we decided I would stop at the Anderson Summer Home in upstate New York at the Chautauqua Institute. It was the best 23 hours of my summer. It was like being at a family summer camp, but with every type of adult education, every kind of art, music, and theater offerings, two lectures a day, lifelong learning at its best. Yup. I was in geek heaven. As Deidre and I were discussing some of the different lecturers, I found out that my favorite New York Times op-ed columnist, David Brooks, had been there earlier. So off we headed so I could purchase a CD of his lecture to keep me company as I started my nine-hour drive back to the South Shore. He is a political and social commentator, and the thought of nerding out for, with him in my car for a couple of hours would be great. Mr. Brooks spoke of the great divide happening in our country and how we can be begin to mend the futures, fissures and build community. That's what we teachers do every day. He ended his lecture with the idea that everyone needs to move forward with love and affection with everyone around us. And driving through the mountains of upstate New York, I thought, that's there's a simple and important message. Go forth with love. Go forth with love. We love our students, even the ones that may be harder to love than others. When we begin next Tuesday, go forth with love. Be understanding and patient, even with those students who might bring too much joy to our rooms. Go forth with love and get to know your students, your families, your colleagues, your administrators. We know that people we come in contact every day are influenced by our behavior. It is said that people, especially students, may not remember what we say to them or what we teach them, but they will always remember how we make them feel. In July of 2004, when I went to my first meeting with Dr. Dorothy Gallo as a new hire, I was a little excited, but mostly I was very nervous, and love was not in my mind. I was quite surprised when she came up to meet me. The South Shore education legend was petite, with a calm reserve that some might misinterpret as standoffish, with the clearest blue eyes I'd ever seen. And although I did not feel it at the time, she came forth with love. She explained that we were not having an interview. I don't second guess who my people hire, making me wonder how long I would be in Hingham. Adding, we're just here to go over the teacher's contract before you sign it. 
The next time I saw her was the first day of school in the old HMS cafeteria as the grade six teachers gathered our homeroom students under her very watchful eye. From that day forward, I was in awe of her expertise. I thought she had clones so she could keep up with all that happens in the district. FYI, there are no clones. For over the next several years, I could not believe how much love Dr. Gallo has brought forth in her modest and quiet style to our school district. Dorothy Gallo is a product of our district, leaving it only for several years, the first four when she studied at Radcliffe and Harvard, and then after that when she worked in Situate. Other than those five years she has been in here, been here in Hingham, bringing forth love, wise judgment, an incredible financial acumen, several renovation projects, two new schools, has worked on local, state, and federal issues on education. Dot has also gone around the world to accredit and advise some of the most prestigious international schools. When I get asked by other association presidents about her longevity in the districts and how our schools might be a bit provincial in our thinking, I always disagree with them. I have found Dr. Gallo to be one of the most forward-thinking administrators I have ever met. Last year, in my first year as HEA president, I was amazed at the amount of institutional knowledge that she could discuss without notes. But her legacy is right here in this room. One of my BU instructors would say, a great leader has a knack for getting the right people on the bus. We have busloads of people sitting here right now. Look around. Dot has hired almost every single person in this room. Krista McAuliffe said, to teach is to touch the future. And by her incredible direction, that future will be touched for many generations to come. And every single person in this room has touched or will touch more lives than we can imagine. Dot gave us that possibility, and she did it by going forth with love. Love of family, especially Teddy, love of our town, love of education, love of people, especially the people in this room, love of country. Let us follow her lead and go forth with love, this year and always. Thank you, Dr. Gallo, for your kindness, wisdom, and leadership. We're going to take a brief intermission just to sort of reset for some business items. But before we do, uh, Don, if you want to come up here, could all of our retirees uh, who have come to join us today to uh, thank Dot for her service and be present with her, would you mind just standing so we can get, uh, so Dot can uh, see where you're all at? And then a round of applause for our retirees. So part of our pause is uh, we would not want to, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so before the retirees leave, be sure you leave me the agenda of the lunches and all of the social events for next year. I'll be meeting. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to take a brief five to ten minute uh, uh, recess, uh, so feel free to uh, grab, refresh your coffee, grab a snack, uh, use the washroom, and our retirees will not make you sit through the next portion of our program. So uh, we'll come back um, at just about five minutes uh, to ten. <laughs>